Hello and welcome back for another episode of FCC Fan TV. Nick here with my co-host Cody. What's going on, guys? And Cody, let's jump into it. Since last time we've talked, there has been a ton of news in the orange and blue sphere. So let's start off with the biggest one that is rumored, probably done, maybe some hiccups in the deal as of today, but Frankie Amaya is being traded to Red Bull New York. Yeah, uh, what I found interesting about that it ended up being Red Bull was that reportedly FC had also filed tampering charges with the MLS League office against Philadelphia and New York, and then like three days later he was traded to New York. So, and frankly, we filed tampering charges on MLS against MLS in this case with some sweet single entity <laughs> rules. So that's also a fun wrinkle that MLS has to police itself in this case. But yes, that was it's interesting true. that we then did see that deal get worked out with one of those teams. So. It looks like we played a little hardball with them and looks like it may pan out because what we're getting back rumored is around $1 million in GAM, general allocation money, which is something we really need for this roster to one, either well, we can talk about purchase more international slots or really just kind of have some more roster flexibility going into the season. Yeah, uh, I would say as of today, we're one international slot short of what kind of what we're looking for. Um but, yeah, I agree. Um, and the deal is contingent, though, on him signing a contract with Red Bull. So Yeah, I believe it was Steve Goff, one of the beat writers that covers MLS, put that out, that that's apparently the thing. So we'll see how serious Frankie is with getting out of here. Because that could be a huge sticking point if that falls apart. Then he's more than likely not going anywhere for the start of the season. So I wonder then if this does fall apart, if he's obviously, I don't think he's going to be in the match day squad. I don't think you could play him after any of this. So no, I'll be curious because I'm how it just all plays out. Hopefully everything goes smoothly. He signs the deal. We get a million dollars in GAM purchase an international style. Like you said, we need, I think the going rate for those is kind of around two, 250, 200. I believe the last one was purchased by Atlanta for 250 or purchase. So that'd be a nice, way to help the roster here um there's kind of general feelings how do you feel about this whole situation in general uh okay pending he if it is contingent around him signing this contract with new york um i'm happy in the sense that we got it over with before the season started i don't want this carrying on into the season uh so that's the first thing first thing is happy that it's just over it's done with did I want to see Frankie progress with us? Yes, but clearly he was unhappy. Um, we we gave in to him, but if the return's a million a game, then we essentially won this. I, I, a million a game's perfectly fine with me. I, I think it's a very reasonable return for everything that's happened. And as you said, I'm also sad to see Frankie go. I think he could have turned into a great number six, number eight in this league. I'm not sure he'll ever turn into the number 10 attacking midfielder he thinks he is. I hope he does. Honestly, I hope he goes to Red Bull New yeah. York, kills it, ends up on the pipeline to Europe as Salzburg, Red Bull, over in the Bundesliga, becomes a big player. I wish the best for him at this point, but friendship ended with Frankie Amaya. Allocation money is my new friend. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you brought up the Red Bull connection, too, is that this does create a bigger pipeline for him personally to go to Europe. Uh, I don't even I honestly don't know if that's a pipe dream of his or not. I mean, I'm, it is for most players. Um, but being under the Red Bull umbrella, he now has that direct pipeline if he succeeds in New York. And honestly, I so think good for him. I think if Red Bull can even get him to buy into playing the eight for them, he'll be great in that system, the sort of. They're going back, it looks like, to the roots of being the pressing team, uh, wanting to win the ball. And that's – Frankie showed that in his two years here. Is like he had a knack for making tackles and winning the ball back. So yeah, I hope he buys in when he gets there. Um, wish the best for him. But we've got our money theoretically, hopefully, and I, time to move on. <laughs> yeah, we have theoretical dollars right now, but we'll take them. And speaking of moving on, we've got news that Kyle Scott, who is here on trial, is not going to be signing a contract with FC Cincinnati. Apparently, sides are pretty far apart for the final contract offer, and he's heading back over to what is it, Newcastle U23s at this point until his contract runs down in the summer, and it looks like he's going to be trying to find a new team over in Europe. 
and I haven't really kept up with any of the rumors if he's got any interest over there after his trial here, but he will not be playing for FC Cincinnati this season. No, and I think he was someone that we were kind of looking forward to getting a chance to see, um, especially because our midfield's still kind of up in the air at this point. But he, uh, I believe we reportedly offered him a two-year deal. I don't know what he was looking for, um, but he rejected that and went back to Europe. And, you know, it is what it is, and we're going to move on. Yep. It was a little unfortunate we didn't get to see more of him. We've only saw the few flashes from the one uh, televised, broadcasted, streamed preseason game against the Fire, which he did look promising in. But, I mean, that was a 45-minute yeah. cameo when he subbed on for Lucho. So, Apparently the team did want to sign him, but they were far apart in a contract, which is unfortunate. But if he was going to be asking for too much money, the roster just does not have the flexibility cap wise at this point for another expensive senior roster player. So hope things work out for him and he finds a new team back there in Europe. But it, it kind of can't really feel like it's a loss considering we only saw 45 minutes. Exactly. It, it's just a uh, it, it's a loss of what could have been, but we have no idea what it could have been. So, well, let's kind of then kind of go to some positive notes on players who will be here this upcoming season for FC Cincinnati. We signed a lot of players to contracts and just brought in some players from, well, I'll say one for overseas and one from South America here. Who do you want to start off with? Uh, let's start off with Flanagan. Okay, so keeping it local, Flanagan, our super draft pick from this year, second one what was it number twenty nine. We signed him to a yep, one twenty ninth overall pick. Signed him to a one year contract with three additional option years. Seems to be the nice depth signing that we were hoping he'd pan out into, and I think we're really going to need him to start this season. Uh, he's played left back, I believe, in college, but he, in the preseason friendly against Chicago, was actually subbed on and played left center back. And with the injury status of Michael Vanderwerf looking like he's going to be out for a potentially four to six weeks, I think is the rumor I've seen, we may need a deputy there in, in the back line, and it looks like they think he can help fill that and also cover left back. Yeah, and we need depth on the whole back line in general anyway. So any defending signing at, signing at this point is what we need. Uh, but it's always exciting signing your own you know, super draft pick. And I, so. yeah, and I think some news that just Pat Brennan tweeted out right before we recorded this is that we are signing trialist Edgar Castillo to come on. 34-year-old journeyman uh, played last year for, I believe, Atlanta United. It might have been the year before that. But he only played, I want to say, four games last year. But he's a left back, and I think just nice – depth signing with MLS experience, which I'm assuming he's coming on a relatively cheap deal. So I can't have any negatives with that one. No, as of now, we'll say it can't hurt. Uh, I mean, we'll see what happens, but as of, as of right now, it absolutely cannot hurt to have this depth. And then we have the two more of the, I'll say exciting uh, potential signings. Yeah. We hear with the potential these players have that rumor is they'll probably fall under the new, U22 Young Money initiative that MLS is pushing that was announced is actually official today. Rules have not been released, so we'll see when that happens. Apparently, rumor is tomorrow. But these players should potentially slot into it depending on how the contract's base. So which one of our two new potential Young Money signings do you want to talk about? Uh, let's stick with defense. I like it. So we'll go. let's go with uh, Gustavo. Gustavo Viasia. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is actually coming over on a one year loan from Ecuadorian club. This is another one. SD Aukus? Aukus for 20. I'll go. I like, I like Aukus. It looks like it's got that sound to it. But he's coming over for the 2021 MLS season. Uh, I have not seen if there's any option to buy. I assume there is, but I'm not sure if it's triggered on anything. Some, anything like that. But I have to imagine that this isn't just going to be a one year loan if he performs. Correct. And it doesn't matter what league they come from. They come from, you know, if they come from Ecuador, if they come from Europe, you never know when players are transferring countries and leagues, how they're going to perform. Uh, he looks really good. He plays on the Ecuadorian national team, I believe. Yeah, at least he's gotten caps um, for the U20. The, U, the U23 team. squad, I know for sure. I don't know if he's actually made the senior team caps, um, but he's looked good in those. Uh, he actually did play against the United States when they beat uh, the U.S. 2-1. Um, for the U23 squad. So uh, my hopes are high, but you just never know how these players are going to come in and transfer to a whole new league in a whole new country. 
I I um, did like what I've seen some of the highlights from his that the team put out and then just kind of doing some YouTube searching. Apparently, he was a converted defensive midfielder to play left center back because he is left footed, which is really nice for that position because we definitely need, as we talked about earlier, depth along that back line and especially at center back right now. Uh, looks like he likes to get forward pretty quick and he is not shy to make a tackle. So. No, that's the one thing I noticed from watching highlights is he is aggressive on the ball. Yes, and I would say, maybe too aggressive. And I would say that's <laughs> definitely different from you could say how Pedersen plays, who's definitely more of a ball yeah. playing center back. So it's a nice flexibility that'll offer when he arrives. I believe him and our other signing are still tied up with having to get visa issues and have not made it here yet. So I'll be curious to see when they get here and when we're able to kind of incorporate them into the team because. It feels like he's a player that we're going to want to get up to speed as quick as we possibly can and see what we have on our hands. Yeah. Uh, so we've t pro touched on this previously, but our center back depth is poor right now. So this is a big, big, big boost for us. Um, and it's also an international spot, though. <laughs> Something that we still need, I believe, one more spot, but he will take up an international spot on this year's squad. And we'll find out rosters have to be compliant friday how this is all going to squeeze yep. together so obviously the club's got time to work on it so we'll see the puzzle's going to come clear then uh, but speaking of international slots we've got our next signing that came in and since we last recorded winger isaac atanga via the transfer from danish superliga club fc nordsland yeah we're going to go with nordsland here that's good it's good. So Cody, did you get to see any of his footage that the team put out? I didn't, so this one's going to be all you. Okay, so what we have on our hands is speed. Speed, speed. Definitely a more direct winger. Not really technical as much on the ball, but he loves to run in behind from the sh clips we've seen. And he really likes to make those near post runs um, just fast. And I think it's just a dimension we actually don't have on the wing right now. A lot of ours look, like to play on the ball, uh, t maybe take players on the dribble more. And Atonga is going to look like he's going to try to kind of take an NFL term here, take the top off the defense here and give us that outlet, um, which could really be another option that we haven't had before. I mean, Jao kind of played <laughs> that way there, but I, I think he might even give Jao a run for his money with how fast he looks. So if we, what you're saying is if we put him out on the right between him and Zhao, we're just going to outrun every single team on that right-hand side. I would love to see it and hope we get the chance. To <laughs> I, if I was a left back in MLS and these guys are coming at me and I'm not sure how I'm going to try to stay in front of both of them. So yeah, uh, very excited. He looked like he was great at finishing on crosses too. Very solid one touch um, for everything. I've kind of did a little research and read on. Not necessarily the best finisher, so that's going to maybe haunt us a bit after watching some of the wasted chances all of last season. Um, Any time we got in the box or things like that. But he does look like he has the ability to just to kind of take those easy ball comes in and out cross and just kind of open himself up and just put at least a shot on frame on those. It's where he's kind of making the dribble himself and then has to try to take the shot on after that where it looks like he may struggle a bit. But like I said, speed. We're, we're going to have a whole different yeah. dimension on that right wing than I would say someone like Barial, who we like to see last year, like to be on the ball, cut in, make the pass himself. So just more depth at, at a position that Jopstam and Nykamp said we wanted to bring depth in and add something else to this team. So it looks like a solid signing so far. Everyone that I've seen has said nothing but great things about this young player, and he was on a lot of people's radar. So looks to be like it's going to be a solid deal for FC Cincinnati. It's great. That's great. And uh, I do believe his contract's a three-year contract with two option years, if I remember seeing that correctly. Yeah, correct. That's what I've got down here. Yeah. So, good. It, you know, it, if it's someone that pans out, then we have him for the next few years. Yep. So, and honestly, I'll be curious to see how we approach these sort of things, whether we end up being more willing to move players on which i think we're gonna have to lean towards just because some of these players look like they're not going to be here for the long term but that yeah. that's probably a discussion for another day on what kind of club we think fc cincinnati is going to be in the future 
So, but I think we've got one more real piece of, I guess, acquisition news here. We acquired $250,000 in general allocation money and a 2022 MLS Super Draft first round selection, plus some future performance based incentives from the Galaxy for the discovery rights for a Valencia swinger, Kevin Cabral. So, good piece of MLS business here by FC Cincinnati, which is nice to see out of this front office. That apparently at some point we put this player on our discovery list, so LA had to pay us to sign him, and that's just great. Yeah, taking advantage of the roster mechanisms and MLS, which is great to see, considering how we definitely did not do that over the first couple of seasons before this front office came in. So the old front office, uh, and really just like Linder and Birding, made it known from the beginning of our MLS entry that the stadium, op- stadium opening year, which is this year, was going to be the year that we were going to put a team on the field. They set that expectation early. It made the first two years really rough. But I think that's what we're starting to see here with us kind of playing the game, the MLS game, uh, with the front office, with these signings, is this is the team they're believing to put on, a t- to put on the field this year to take us to the playoffs. So uh, it's exciting to see these signings. It's exciting to see us like I said, playing the MLS game of finding these players and having to have other teams pay us for them. Um, but that, that's, you know, it's part of the game. Yeah, like I said, it looks very promising for not knee camp Stom that this is all kind of slowly coming together. They've got their toes wet last year with how roster mechanisms and just MLS in general worked. And it looks like that this is hopefully going to start paying dividends this season on and off the field. So that's kind of the yeah. news wrap up. We ran through it all there. It was a very busy seven to 10 days since we last talked. Uh, do you have anything else you want to touch on? Yeah. So I kept bringing up the international spots because I'm going to be the lead bandwagoner for Calvin Harris. And I really like Calvin Harris. Uh, so Calvin Harris was our number two super draft pick out of Wake Forest, but he is from England. So he does take up an international spot. And as of right now, I think he's the odd man out if we can't find something by Friday. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go on loan. Yeah, because we do have that uh, option with his with his contract to send him out there. And it does look like the club really still likes Kovacevic. So, yes, it's going to be very interesting how that all plays out. Yeah, so like I said, I, I want to be the lead bandwagoner on the Calvin Harris bandwagon. I really like the kid. Uh, he had two goals in this preseason Uh, One in the first preseason match and then one against Pittsburgh in this last one. Um, But like I said, I think he'll be the odd man out if we can't figure either if either an international spot doesn't open up or if we don't go and purchase one. um, I think he'll be the odd man out on the loan, but I don't want him to be. I think I think he's our like dark horse candidate to be something special uh, with our forward and winger group. Um, But we'll have to see. Uh, but that's why I keep bringing up the international spot in this podcast because I was waiting to get to Calvin Harris. <laughs> that's fair. Everyone's got to have that player they champion. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know who I want yet. I have not made my decision on who I'm going to on who I'm going to stand this season. No one's really jumped out yeah. to me. I'm thinking I might just Lucho stand. Yeah. Obvious call, but man, his that's okay. I was watching this highlight video and those quick feet. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that I think will do it for our episode today we've got calvin harris yeah and short cody. episode today yep. so we're... that's right <laughs> <laughs> calvin harris and cody really just was sitting here all day trying to get that news in that's what he wanted to talk about yeah it's the only reason i'm actually here yep so cody do you want to kind of take us out today yeah absolutely uh so obviously big week for us first actual mls match three points on the line saturday at nashville uh nick will be down yes, there i will Woo-hoo. yep Nick will be down there in Nashville. Uh, I will not be. I'll be watching it on TV, but that's good. We'll have two different perspectives of what was going on. Uh, so Nick, have fun down there. Um, Nick will try and live tweet at the game. Uh, so you can follow us on Twitter at TV underscore FCC. Uh, some other exciting news is we finally gotten around to throwing these up on podcasts as well. So the first two were YouTube videos only. We are now throwing them up to different podcast platforms. So, so far we have Spotify where you can find us at FCC fan TV and anchor where you can find us at anchor.fm backslash FCC fan TV. And I would say hopefully next week, 
uh, after the first match, we'll try and get it up on Apple. Yeah, that's kind of the goal here to get it up on the main platforms there. Um, that's my goal, at least. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll try and get it up on Apple Podcast soon. Uh, we also want to throw out another episode later on this week to do a Nashville preview. So look for that. And then next week, obviously, early in the week, we'll have our Nashville reactions. Uh, do you have any last words for this episode? Nope, that'll do it for me. Oh, wait, got one thing here that just came up. Uh, this Wednesday, if you guys hear it, it's in time. The Pride is hosting their open house event down at Northern Row. They're going to be the new uh, pregame spot for the Pride. I'm a Pride member, Cody. I'm not sure if you renewed your membership yet this season. I did. Yep, so we – well, I won't say Cody. Cody works late. I will try to be down there for that to show some support. Um, so if you want to come up and say hi or just talk FCC, hope to see you guys there. And that'll do it for this evening. Cody, have a great night. Yeah, you as well. Thanks, guys.